Welcome back to Retro Adventures. This is your host, Paul, and today I'm going to be seeing what Sioux City, Iowa has to offer when it comes to Lewis and Clark history. And then I'm going to be heading northwest into South Dakota. Come along with me. This statue looks very familiar to me. There's one that's almost the exact replica in St. Charles, Missouri. It's a classic example of Lewis and Clark and Seaman. Here we have a fun little walkway depicting some of the animals that the Lewis and Clark expedition saw for the first time. There's also some uh, dinosaurs that are depicted. Very nice. Here's another fun little sculpture. I'm sure the kids around here have a lot of fun coming here and uh, learning a little bit about the Lewis and Clark history. So here I am in the Interpretive Center. Pretty much have this to myself right now. Just opened up for the day. Another example of the Spirit of Discovery statue. Here's Seaman meeting the prairie dog. That's awesome. Here we have some information on, on that monument that I visited just yesterday. I also mentioned this part of history yesterday that Patrick Gass was chosen as a replacement for Sergeant Floyd and he did li indeed live to be 99 years old. Murals in here are just first class. They have put a lot of effort into this museum for sure. And here we have a depiction of York, such an important member of the expedition. We have a model of Sacagawea or Sakakawea, depending on your pronunciation. I'm going to be seeing more and more information about her as I head north into North Dakota. Some more magnificent artwork. This display talks about some of the games and toys that the Native Americans had children can uh, really relate to this. So I was so excited about all the drawings and the models here. I didn't realize you could push a button and the animatronics of these uh, models will talk to you. And they are very lifelike. So let's listen to uh, Sergeant Floyd. My name is Charles Floyd one of three sergeants on the Lewis and Clark expedition, instructed by President Thomas Jefferson to find and map the Northwest Passage that will open our country to great prosperity. It was August 1st, 1803. I was 21 years old, a constable carrying mail between Louisville, Kentucky and Vincennes, Indiana Territory. When Captain Clark recruited me, one of the first three permanent members of the Corps of Discovery, he and Captain Meriwether Lewis saw leadership ability and physical strength in me. They made me one of their three sergeants. Captain Lewis later would call me a young man of much merit. As a sergeant, I commanded a small squad of soldiers. I rotated work on the keelboat and supervised basics of Camp Latin. This freed the captains to work on the expedition's diplomatic and scientific objectives. As a sergeant, I was required to keep a journal as a record of our voyage, in case the captain's journals were lost. I was proud to serve on this mission into the treacherous unknown, to carry out my duties, to abide by my captain's orders to the best of my abilities, to cooperate fully in reaching our destination, the Pacific Ocean. With my own eyes, I would see the Pacific Ocean and encounter all wonder and hardship that lay before it. I would return home to tell the story. 
I died of natural causes on August 20th, 1804, here in this land, just three months after our departure from St. Charles, and more than a year before the Corps of Discovery saw the Pacific Ocean. My journal is all that is left to commemorate my part in this important expedition. All the honors of war, the only decent thing we could do. The men performed well, Prof. Your reading was so Captain. Precious little. You spend months thinking of everything you could possibly need on an expedition so important to our country, but somehow you're still unprepared for moments like this. But truly, under the circumstances, I keep thinking if only I recognized his symptoms sooner. It all had so fast. I know. You mustn't blame yourself, Captain. Sometimes I wish I had your common sense, Clark. Of course, that's why I insisted you share this command in the first place. I couldn't have asked more from any man today. Everyone was more than willing. Besides, I couldn't have found a more handsome spot on the bluffs. I only hope the grave is left undisturbed. The coffin should help. Bury them in as deep as we could. God forbid we ever have to make another one. I'd be surprised if we didn't. Who knows what lies ahead of us? How do you think the men are holding up? As well as could be expected. Some of them are pretty young. And death a stern teacher, I know. Sergeant Floyd was well thought of, God bless the man. We need more like him. Do you think Gas can handle his command? Yes, sir. We put it to a vote of the men. Some of these roughnecks, especially a deserter like we, I don't know. Head push on, sir. None of us got much sleep last night and we'll have to make camp soon. Don't tell how much longer this good weather will last. It is a beautiful evening. This land is something special, Clark. What we're doing here, the service to our country of honorable men like Sergeant Floyd, well, it can't be in vain. There's no doubt in my heart whatsoever. slave and body servant of the young William Clark. In 1803, Master William Clark was contacted by his old friend Meriwether Lewis to help command an expedition to find a route to the ocean out west. Of course, I was to come on the trip and leave my wife and family behind for who knows how long. On the trail, I helped with everything. Mapping, hunting, pushing and poling the boat and protecting what we had. I had a gun which meant I had the trust of the men. No slave was ever allowed to carry a gun. I cared for poor Sergeant Floyd when he took ill. None of the captain's medicines could make him better. We buried him atop a hill by what we called Floyd's River. I saw and did amazing things on this journey. I saw places where few white men had ever been. I climbed snow-capped mountains and swam swift-moving rivers. I walked among the native people who welcomed me with open arms. They were amazed at my black skin and called me Big Mess. And I was there when we finally reached the ocean waters. Now I ask that you remember me and my name, so my voice and my story will be heard for generations and generations to come. I dreamed of finding the rumored direct route to the Pacific Ocean, known as the Northwest Passage. The Spanish, French, and British also want to discover that Northwest Passage. But the nation that finds it first will control North America's destiny. In January of 1803, I wrote a secret message to Congress. I requested funds for an expedition led by my former personal secretary, Meriwether Lewis. Congress granted my request. In June of 1803, I sent instructions to Lewis. I described my hopes and his responsibilities. I included the following instructions. Find the Northwest Passage. Carefully record what you observe and learn. Make two copies of your records in case one is lost or damaged. Record longitude and latitude so that maps may be made. Record descriptions of the natural environment, weather, 
plan. Develop friendly relations with the native peoples. Learn about their tribal nations, their goods, languages, laws, traditions, and attitudes. How they farm, fish, hunt, create art, and battle in war. Give them peace medals and other gifts. Arrange for influential chiefs to visit Washington, D.C. Captain Lewis, I give you absolute authority to carry out this military mission of exploring the West. May you and all who serve in this mission safely return with information that will benefit the scientific, commercial, and national interests of our great and growing country. We were also to learn of the relationships between the different tribes and nations, so that wherever possible, we could encourage peace among them. So I have to say that is one of the best museums I have ever been to for Lewis and Clark. So if you are in Sioux City, Iowa, uh, don't miss that. And it's not so large that you can't get through it in about an hour. There's also another building attached uh, right there uh, that has some really nice art uh, work. And uh, this is just a great facility. So uh, if you have a chance, come. And here we have the border between Nebraska and South Dakota. The sign down below said this is one of the few places where the Missouri River is allowed to flow freely without any intrusion, such as dredging. Here's a good explanation of how the river is flowing freely in this location. This is just a magnificent viewpoint. Again, I'm on the Nebraska side getting ready to enter South Dakota. So I'm one state away from my goal. This story the men uh, deviated a little ways from the Missouri River to explore this mound they had been told was inhabited by tiny little warriors and that uh, the Native Americans stayed away from this place thinking that uh, it was uh, haunted but the men found no little people with arrows but they did find their first herd of buffalo and elk. And there it is in the distance, Spirit Mound. So as you can see, this trail leads all the way to the summit. You are asked to be respectful because this is still a sacred site for the Yankton Sioux Tribe. It has been restored in the last uh, about 30 years to as close to its original state as possible. For all you scientific people out there, this explains what this hill is. Um, in short, made of chalk that uh, did not erode away with the rest of the prairie. Okay, the last little bit to the top. This is a really nice walk. I don't think I could have picked a better day. 60 degrees, sunny, April 26, 2023.
on my way up here. I've traveled all across this country and every place is unique. Every place is beautiful in its own way, especially these wide open spaces. So Lewis and Clark's journey here really shows how they were very interested in the, the Native Americans and their customs and the things that they believed in. This was one of the things that Thomas Jefferson charged them to do, to learn about the Native Americans as they traveled across the country and also to uh, tell them that we are coming in peace. Of course, later history did not always meet that goal that Thomas Jefferson had, but uh, the core of discovery, their goal was to show that this was a peaceful operation. This was a peaceful journey. Here we go back down. Little dust devil right there. <laughs> That is awesome. I've come south uh, a little ways back into Nebraska. Behind me is the Gavin's Point Dam. This is where the uh, Missouri River has been dammed up at the time of the Lewis and Clark expedition. They would have uh, gone through this area but uh, now it's uh, run by the Corps of Engineers and it's a very nice recreation area. They also have a visitor center, which I'm going to go in in just a moment and show you around. Again, just a beautiful day here in Northern Nebraska. Of course, South Dakota is just north of here. Here we have a diorama of the Missouri River and um, the dams that go up. Um, you see the light here is the Gavin Point Dam, where I am right now. Uh, it's the first of a series of dams all the way uh, northwest. Here is a American bison skull and all of the uses that the Native Americans had for it. I'm sure the Corps of Discovery also used it for these purposes. There's a really cool display of the fish life and the fowl and other animals that inhabit the river basin. Even though this is called the Lewis and Clark Visitor Center, it covers a variety of topics. Nothing wrong with that. Looks like there are a lot of activities for the kids. Uh, this is just uh, north of Crofton, Nebraska. So if you're in the area, drop by. It's a really nice visitor center. So I did learn that this is the first in a series of dams for the Missouri River, or former Missouri River. This is actually one of the smaller dams, but it was completed in 1955 and started uh, hydroelectric capacity in 1956. What a beautiful, beautiful area this is. That's probably going to do it for today's adventures. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, 
subscribe to this channel and follow me as I continue on the Lewis and Clark journey up to North Dakota.